good afternoon, uh, good evening, wherever you are from. Um, my name is Patrick Backus, and I am live here in Redding, California. And I'm excited um, for today and for this message and for this sharing. I'm just excited for all God's doing. Um, I was caught up yesterday while I was outside doing some yard work, and God was just hitting me um, with past uh, testimonies and things that I've walked through, things that I've gotten to see um, in my life. And I started this journey um, really following him back in 2010. Good morning, Zoltan. So good to see you. I love Zoltan. He's on our uh, third year team with Igniting Hope, all of the amazing graphics. Um, all, all the media and many more things are produced by Zoltan. He's a mighty man of God. And um, yeah, I was just reflecting yesterday in the yard and uh, blown away with where God has brought me um, and what he's done um, in my life. Because when I think back of who I was uh, to who I am now and to where I'm going to be, um, I'm, I'm truly blown away and just in awe of God's grace and his might, his power to forgive, his power to heal, um, his power to save and redeem a life. Um, and that life was mine um, back in the day when I was not knowing who I was, uh, full of anxiety and fear and anger and depression. I was lost in the world. And one day I said yes to God and I had um, no clue what was to come from that yes, but I knew that I needed him and I, I had no other choice. I had no other hope. I had no other option. Um, it had to be him. And so I said yes to God and he said yes to me. And then just reflecting back on life and my journey with him, I am um, in great gratitude um, for his goodness and for his love. And good morning, Paul. Good morning, Paul. Yes, I am here in uh, Redding, California. It was actually cold this morning. I don't know if you've been to Redding before, but usually it's pretty hot, pretty dry, but there was ice uh, on my windows in my car today. And so that was a nice thing uh, to walk out to. And thankfully I have seat warmers in my car. I made it here safely and I'm excited to share. Um, I recently was blessed with the opportunity to go to Africa and I went to Uganda. Um, this is the third time I've been to Uganda, and I just wanted to share some of the testimonies that took place there, um, starting back in 2017, which is the first time I went. And if you're just popping on, um, what I was sharing earlier is how I've just been in awe and gratitude of what God has done in my life, where he's taken me, um, where I'm going to be going, and just his goodness to transform a life and to work through someone that says yes. All we have to do is say yes to him and he will move, he will show up, and he will answer prayers. He is a good father, and he loves us very much. Um, so yeah, this, this message, I believe, will impact you um, and inspire you to see your dreams fulfilled, to see desires fulfilled, to see the impossible um, become a normal thing in your life, because we have a God who is God over the impossible. He is God over any circumstance. Um, any situation that does not align with his will. He is working and he is moving and he chooses to partner with his children um, to see these things happen. And so the first testimony I want to share, I'm going to share about my recent trip, which happened this past month. Um, but before that, I want to lead up to it a little bit and share about um, the first time I went in 2017. So in 2017, I was living in upstate New York and living with a couple other um, young men and just growing in the word with them and growing in evangelism and walking with God. And I got this opportunity um, to go with a random group of people. I think I knew two or three of the 11 that were going. And it was an opportunity to go to Kenya and to go to Uganda. And immediately I said yes, because that had been a desire on my heart. Um, for a long time was to go to Africa and God had just placed a special um, care and passion for the people and for the land there. Um, since I was young, before I believe I was even walking with him, hey Melinda. Um, and so the opportunity came and I said yes. 
And so I was filled with excitement and anticipation until the trip began to grow um, closer and it was almost time to leave. And as the trip grew closer, I started to struggle with uh, my own identity and my own ability to walk in what God has called me to walk in. And I was looking um, to other people that I knew, to other followers of Christ who are, are great men of God. And I was comparing myself to them and wondering why, why is he not going? He's a, a better speaker than me. He's a better preacher than me. Why is he not going? This guy's a better pastor than me. This guy I feel has more wisdom than me. This guy's seen more healings. And just comparing myself to all these people that weren't me when I knew I had this call of God to go. And after going to the Lord with that, it's okay to have questions and to go to him in prayer uh, for confirmation. Thankfully, he uh, confirmed it multiple times that I was the one to go. Um, this was a trip for me. And so I got on the plane and we went. And as uh, soon as we got there, I was expecting to see him move. And I knew I would see miracles and healings, but I wasn't jumping off the plane thinking I was ready, thinking I was good to go. I was still anxious and nervous and a little timid. Um, but you know, God knows how to work with us. And when we say yes, and we begin to move, um, he, he moves with us and he prepares the way he opens the doors. He gives us the confidence and the strength and, um, really his spirit, his spirit has all that we need. It says that we are complete in Christ and complete means complete. Um, Jesus gave us the commission. He said, you go, you do, I will be with you. And so I went there to Africa, and the first day we were there, we did a conference, and we were working with some of the, uh, the church people there. And we wanted to empower them and equip them and show them that they could do what Jesus did. <laughs> yes, Sultan, I'm glad I did not jump out of the plane. I don't think I would have had faith to fly. That would have, that would have been a mess. Um, but yeah, so we get there, and we're doing the conference, and the first day of the conference, um, we wanted to teach on the manifestations of the Spirit. And so we were sharing on speaking in tongues and encouraging the congregation um, that all of these manifestations are available um, to them, that they are gifts from God uh, for the church, for the people of Christ uh, to use and to apply in their lives. And so we were, we were doing speaking in tongues, and at the end of the session, um, we had people begin to speak in tongues and be activated and we had a call to the front if anybody wasn't confident, um, if anyone felt like they needed more teaching, more coaching, that we would pray with them. And we would believe that they'd be leaving there knowing that they can do it and doing it. And so there was a line of some Africans and all of the people that came on the trip were in the front of the church. And I was in the back, um, but I made my way up to the front. And I just tapped this uh, lady in line who was next in line on the shoulder and said, hey, come over here we're going to do this thing. And so I uh, got to speak some words of life over her and encourage her and then tell her, all right, I'm going to begin speaking in tongues. And then you begin as well. You move your lips. God will fill um, your tongue. God will fill your mouth with his words. And so I began to speak in tongues and she was sitting there and her eyes um, began to water and her lips were quivering, um, but nothing was coming out. And so I tried that for a little bit and then said all right time out i'm going to pray we're going to do this again um, I, I believe you can do it and so we did it again and I, I spoke in tongues and then her um, eyes were really watering her lips were really quivering and then um, this woman she was i would say in her 40s um, she began to speak in tongues and glorify god and she she threw her hands in the air praising god and then she just left she like she ran out of the building um, out of the yeah the building outside that we were in and then the translator turns to me and says that that woman who just spoke in tongues she was mute uh, she's been mute since birth and she was 40 something years old and the first words that she spoke um, were speaking in tongues giving glory to God and this was my first day in Africa and I was not expecting that whatsoever I did not know that she could not speak um, but God knew and there was an opportunity there and she was totally healed. And I believe that she is leading um, her people. She is leading her church right now um, in great and mighty ways because that's what God does um, when someone says yes. That's what someone does 
that's what God does when someone goes into a situation that seems impossible. Um, he opened up her mouth and she was able to speak in tongues. And so that really um, helped change my perspective and my expectation for the trip. I began to become very more, uh, very much more excited uh, to see God move and take more chances. And um, on that trip, it was amazing. There was a man paralyzed for 10 years who was able um, to walk. There was another man who had a crutch and he came up for prayer at one of the church services and he wanted prayer because his neighbor was stealing from his land and he was not mobile enough to stop him. And so I, I prayed for protection over his field and over his property. And then he started to hobble away. And I'm like, wait, I, wa I want to pray for your foot, your leg. What's going on? Why are you on this crutch? And he was kind of reluctant, um, but he let me pray. And he said that he had been in a motorcycle accident. I believe it was two years previously. And his whole ankle and foot and bottom leg were messed up. And so he let me pray for him. And I put my hands on the ankle and it was, um, it was really messed up. It was as thick as his thigh would be. It was just a big blob of stuff. And so I was kind of taken aback, but I'm like, God, you're here. I know you're with me. I know you heal. And so I prayed and I said a quick prayer and sent him on his way. And he did not walk off leaping and praising God. He walked off on his crutch, hobbling away. Um, but we got a text next Sunday um, from the church uh, leader in that region. And it was a photo of the guy with his crutch in the air, praising God, walking around the church. Uh, because he had been healed and so that was my first trip there it set me up um, I believe to take more chances and to see that God is with me and to see the real power of God that I had not seen before and so even if I wasn't fully confident at the beginning um, God knew how to build my faith along the way God knew how to build my faith the way and I'm saying if you have something in your life right now that you are not confident about, that you are nervous about, um, that you don't know if God's going to come through on, I'm here to say he will come through. I'm here to say that he is for you, he is not against you, um, that nothing can stand between you and the promises of God for your life. And once you begin to walk out towards those things that he's called you to, he will back you up. He will back you up. Amanda, I see you said finances in the chat. And so I just, I released the abundance of heaven um, over your life and that there are endless resources. There's no lack in the kingdom. So God, thank you for your financial blessing on Amanda and anyone else in this chat who's listening. Um, it's funny you should say finances, Amanda, because the second time, this is another testimony I was going to share. The second time I went to Africa, um, I went with one other person and we had a Ugandan contact who we met at the end of our first trip. And he was, um, he was our guy. He was our connection over there. And so he was preparing the trip on his end, and me and my friend were preparing it from the States. And uh, we sent a bunch of money over beforehand to cover equipment, to cover rentals, to cover gas. And he ended up spending nearly all of the money on his past debts and on other things that he was not supposed to spend it on. And so it was day three of us being in Africa on a one month journey. And we were actually out of money. We were out of funds. Um, but me and the other guy, we said, do we want to go through with this? Do we want to begin the trip? Or do we want to just call it and stay where we are and see God move here? Uh, but we felt that we were to, to push forward and to move on. And so we continued on the trip as if we had the funds. And every day, every time we needed something, we would check our phones and someone random, some people that we didn't know, some people that we had not had contact with in a long time, um, sent us money just in time, always the right amount. Um, there was only one opportunity. We were not able to cross the Kenyan border at a certain time when we wanted to because there weren't enough funds there, but it ended up working out very well because we got to see um, an old friend that we had met on our first trip there. And so I'm saying that, that God has it. God has the finances. God has the resources. God has uh, the right career. God has the right friends. God has everything that we need. Everything that we need. He has promised us a life of abundance. Um, 
he has promised to show his goodness to the world through us. And so we just say yes. And so God, I pray if there's anybody on this call um, that's in need of finances, that is in need of encouragement, that is in need of a shift, um, is in need of a move of God in their lives, Lord, I thank you that you see them and you know them and you will get them where they need to be. And so God, I thank you for your divine strategies, your divine plans uh, being released, your wisdom, God, from above that is not anything close to man's wisdom, God. Your wisdom is infinite and great and you love to share it to your children. And so I thank you that we are open to receive. Yes. And so I wanna share another um, testimony from now my most recent trip. I was just there uh, a month ago and we were there for two weeks and we were in Uganda, uh, which is a place I've been to twice now and it's very dear to my heart. And in leading up to the trip, I, uh, we were having our, our pre-meetings and going over what was going to be taking place. And the lady in charge said, who wants to preach at a crusade? Who wants to lead people to Christ? And this is something I've never done before. Um, to that extent, I've led people to Christ and I have had preaching opportunities. But in my mind, it seemed like something really big and something really hard as well. But for some reason, my arm just shot up and I said, me. I want to do it. I'll volunteer. And as my arm's going up, I'm like, what am I doing? Why, Patrick? Why are you volunteering for this? You're in over your head. <laughs> um, but thankfully, if we get in over our heads or in situations where we don't feel totally comfortable in, we can rely on him. And he will come through. He will move. And that's exactly what he did. Um, we got off the plane. And the first night there, we had a crusade. So went home, went to the hotel got into Uganda around midnight, got to the place where you're staying around five or six in the morning, and then slept a few hours and went off to the crusade. And um, the first day there, um, ended up doing an altar call, which I had never done before. It was a new opportunity. And um, there was a few hundred people there. We had a, f a lot of healings take place before the altar call, praise God. And then during the altar call, we had 15 men um, come forward to confess Jesus as Lord. And I did not know at the time, but that's very unique uh, to Uganda and to their culture. It's a very Muslim um, region. And I forgot to mention the place that we did the crusade at. It was a three-day crusade, and it was in a school ground, a schoolyard. And I asked our leader on the Ugandan side, why did he pick this area? And he said it was because of the demonic influence over them. Um, many of them had not heard the gospel. And there was a witch doctor who was controlling the region. And recently a witch had actually gotten possessed and gone into a school and she killed a child. Um, and then another child died from a curse. And many of the children and teachers left the school and they left um, the education in that, in that district. And so that's where we did it, right in the school lot right there. And there's a lot of kids there, there's a lot of women there, and there's some men there. And so did the altar call and 15 men came forward. And um, a couple of them were related to the witch doctor. I believe three or four of them were related to the witch doctor in that region. And another one was the leader of the district. And so I'm sharing these testimonies with people later on in the trip and they were shocked because it's very rare for even one man to publicly confess Christ. Um, so for 15 at one meeting was huge. And for some of those men to be related to the witch doctor and another to be the leader of the town um, was also very huge. And I just received word um, yesterday that five days ago, the witch doctor of that region and his entire family um, have confessed Christ. And they're going around and burning their shrines um, and destroying all the evil works that they had done there previously. And so praise God for transformation. Praise God for radical opportunities um, to share his love and to share his truth. I did not know who was in the crowd. I did not know what would take place afterwards. I did not even necessarily want to preach at that crusade because of nerves and looking at myself. Um, but thankfully, once I began, there was a great peace that came over me and God showed up and God moved. And I believe that that region's forever changed. Um, the second day there, we did the same thing, another crusade. And at the time for healing, did a call to prayer and a call to healing. 
And at the end of the, the prayer, the healing prayer, I asked the crowd, who here notices a difference? Who here is healed? And I said, wave your hands because I want to see. And the whole crowd, hundreds of people, probably 400 to 600 people are waving their hands. And I thought, okay, these people just want to wave their hands. They maybe didn't understand what I was saying. Like I expected to see a lot of people healed, maybe 70%, but I did not expect to see 100%. And so I didn't think they understood what I said. And so I'm like, all right, if you're not healed, wave your hand, wave your hand, because maybe they'll all wave their hands again if they don't understand. And we have a translator, but um, only one person waved their hand. Only one person in that crowd said, I'm not healed. And so we prayed again for them. And in the middle of the prayer, they started praising God because they were healed. And so it was a really um, amazing trip, amazing opportunity to see lives changed, um, regions really restored um, with the correct spirit coming into place, the spirit of Christ. And it was a treat. I'm very excited, very jacked up um, for what God's doing in Uganda. And uh, yeah, there was another man there. He was uh, drunk off of his mind the first day. And he was one of the 15 that received Christ. He was there the next day, completely sober and in his might, in his right mind, um, praising God and so grateful to see us and uh, to be able to communicate with us. Um, there was another lady that came to testify the second day of the crusade, saying that she wasn't even at the first day, um, but she knew it was taking place. And during the crusade, the power of God came on her in her home and she was healed. And it was from something that had been bothering her for years. I, I don't remember exactly what it was. And I think it was a shoulder, but I'm not positive. And so I just want to say, if you have any longstanding um, injuries, if you have any longstanding pain, God is healing you. God is moving. God, I thank you for your power to heal. I thank you for your love, God, for your children. And if anyone here is battling with any infirmity, any disease, any sickness, longstanding or short, I just declare it to be healed. Amanda, I speak life over your teeth, that there be no more pain in Jesus' name. And so I'll share one more um, testimony from that crusade. There was a lot that took place and a lot that we don't even know about um, because there's just so many people and you can't fully keep track of everything. But Uganda is a very young nation. Um, they have over 50% of the population under 16 years old. And so in the middle of the crusade, they'll be doing worship and praise and other people will be talking. And at times you'll go out into the crowd to lay hands on people and bless them and pray for them. But you don't always have a translator, so you don't always know what they need. But thankfully God knows what they need and we go out in faith, um, talking, to them, talking to them, touching them, loving them. Uh, however quick it is, God's power is there. And so there was a mother, I don't remember this specifically, but there was a mother that brought her child up to me and she was um, a 10 year old girl and she had some stuff going on in her stomach where it was uh, some disease that was, it was eating her up and they went to normal doctors and the doctors could not help. Um, they went to the witch doctor in the region and he could not help. And their last hope was to go to the crusade and so they went there and they saw me in the crowd and they brought her up to me. And this is when I'm just laying hands and praying very quick prayers for people. And I don't remember ever praying for anybody's stomach specifically, but I guess I prayed for her and they left um, the meeting after that. And they left really discouraged and broken because there was no change. Um, she was still in a lot of pain and they went to bed that night, not knowing if she was going to wake up the next morning. Um, uh, but thankfully the next morning came and she woke up and she was completely healed. And um, the mom and the daughter were the first people at the crusade the next day before anybody from the team was there, before anybody else from the crowd was there. Um, but they were the first ones there because they wanted to testify and give glory to God for what he had done. And that is our God. Yes, Kelly, I believe um, for your child to be well for your child to be healed. And this is the power of God that lives inside of us, that lives inside of every believer. Um, when we pray with our understanding or if we're praying by the Spirit, God is with us and He is moving. 
and no situation can stay the same, no circumstance can stay the same. I started off at the beginning of this message, if you didn't hear, talking about how I was um, beginning my journeys insecure, thinking I was inadequate, wondering why I was the one that God chose for these things. Um, but very quickly, as we begin to walk and begin to do, we see that it's His Spirit inside of us that's moving. We see that it's His power, it's His glory that gets to be revealed through us, His children on the earth. And it's not about what I can bring in the flesh. It's about what He can bring in the Spirit. And so if anybody is being held back by um, past experiences or feelings of doubt, um, shame, guilt, wondering if they're enough, I'm here to say you are. And more importantly, God is here to say that you are. God is here to say that you are enough. God is here to say that you do have what it takes. God is here to show you that he is with you. And so I encourage you and implore you um, to walk out and take a chance and see him show up. He'll walk with us one day at a time, one step at a time. Yeah, glory to God. Um, a few other things took place in the trip. Um, we did many conferences there with leaders and then also um, with youth. And then there was a women's conference as well. And it was really encouraging to hear at the leaders' events and the leaders' conferences testimonies um, from church leaders in Tanzania and Kenya and Uganda and in Rwanda all came and shared that they had been at some of our events in the past. And some of the people on my trip have taken many more trips there than me. But they had learned things from um, the conferences about walking by the Spirit and about their identity in Christ. And in Africa, a big thing over there is that there is one man of God or one woman of God, and everyone goes to them. Um, but the revelation of Christ in us, uh, the hope of glory, his spirit residing in each believer without measure, um, that he's not a respecter of persons, has really helped change their culture and their, uh, their churches. And many people now in the congregations are going out and seeing moves of God on their own without having to call the pastor. If somebody's sick, they don't need to call the healer because they know the healer lives in them. And so they minister healing and deliverance comes. And so that was uh, very nice for the pastors because they don't have to be everywhere all the time now. They've seen the truth that their people can do and their people have grabbed hold of it. And um, I'm just in shock and awe of the transformations that's taken place in the small areas that I've gone to over the last five years, really. And I'm just very excited for what God's continuing to do there. I actually get to lead a trip. Um, I'm blessed with an opportunity to take a team of students from Bethel Ministry School in March, and I'll be taking 21 students back to Uganda with me. Um, it's going to be good. Pray for us. Um, send your support um, in the chat, anything that you want to say. Um, Prayer-wise, any, any words, knowledge that you have, any prophetic words that you have for us. Um, we are very excited and expectant for what God will do. And this is some of their uh, first trips over there. And so the testimonies that I shared from my first trip earlier in this video, um, I'm believing that will happen for them, that they will come back radically encouraged and empowered, knowing who they are and knowing who God is through them. Um, yeah, uh, I'm going to share a couple more things with you. At the youth conference, we got, I got to share on uh, words of knowledge and prophetic words, and there was... Um, close to 300 youth there, I would say, and we were able to give out 100, 200 something Bibles, which was amazing um, because Bibles cost a month's wages over there. Um, so we were blessed with a bunch of Bibles to give them, but then we were doing activations um, and hearing God and, and speaking prophetic words. And there were 20 to 30 um, youth that thought they had never heard God's voice before. Um, leave that building knowing that they heard from God and that he gave them accurate words of knowledge for people around them and accurate prophetic words. And so that was really encouraging. Um, and then something I really was not expecting at all. I wasn't praying for it. I wasn't believing for it. I wasn't asking for it. Maybe in the future I thought this could come, but it really wasn't even a thought. Um, but near the end of the trip there, one of the ladies that was leading our group she had been there many times in the past five years with her husband, and God has shown them that they are to um, build a building over there with electricity, 
on a nice property and they built it over the last couple of years. And this was her first time stepping foot on the property is where we held our leaders advance. Um, and it's a gorgeous building with amazing land and crops growing. And it's a great central location for leaders from other areas to come and gather instead of us having to go all over the place because it takes time to get to different areas there. And we go to the property and as soon as she stepped foot on it, um, she felt the Lord say that you need to give this property up. And uh, she offered it to me. She offered the property to me, something that she had been building for years um, that I didn't know work for um, was just handed to me. And I know that I'm going to be going to Africa many times in the future. I know I'll be going to Uganda many times in the future um, because that is what God has put on my heart. And he gave, he gave me a building. He gave me a building. I was not expecting it whatsoever. Um, and so I declare that if you need a building for your church, if you need a building for your business, if you need any structure whatsoever, God knows it and he knows how to give it to you. And so I just want to say everything from A to Z, God has covered. He doesn't miss a letter. He doesn't miss a step. He's really good. He's really gracious. Excuse me. <coughs> the dry air. But yes, I am I'm thrilled that you would take this time to be with us today, to listen to me share. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry some of the things that God's done in my life. <coughs> it blows me away. He's really faithful. He loves us so much, you guys. And that's what I wanted to share today. God bless you. <laughs>